members. Just gone past 2.30 and I'll call the meeting to order. Item number one, confirmation of minutes of uh, last meeting, minutes of the 22nd meeting held on May the 12th, 2017. The minutes have been made available to members. Right. We have received uh, no comments on the minutes. Can we take the minutes as read? Okay. Matters arising. Report on meeting with the CS. There is nothing in particular to bring members up to date. Vice Chair, Madam Chair, last time uh, when we met the CS, I formally told the CS that for Mr. C.Y. Uh, Leung as Chief Executive to interfere with the work of a select committee is uh, wholly inappropriate and we find this uh, wholly regrettable. Since this is um, seriously undermining the relationship between the executive and the legislature, I hope that the CS uh, would um, address this and I hope that he would uh, understand the situation and uh, let us know about the truth. There wasn't uh, something discussed uh, at the House Committee and during the meeting with CS uh, he um, made all these comments. You want to speak? Mr. Alvin Young. I'd like to follow up on the Vice Chairman's report. I'd like to find out um, how the CS reacted to this. Now you stated um, our voices, so I'd like to find out uh, whether the CS agreed or disagreed. Will he follow up or will he be reflecting uh, the situation to the relevant people? Uh, he said uh, he would try to understand uh, the issue. I have not received anything from the CS office. Mr. Young, at the next meeting uh, with the CS, uh, will you be following up on this issue? I ask for uh, a response. Mr. Yip Kin Yun, I think you have to queue up. The Vice Chairman's report is uh, terribly important because it has to do with the re relationship between the Executive and the Legislature. So when you two meet the CS next time, you have to emphasize that the issue uh, has to do not just with the CE but also other principal officials. If um, there is such a naked uh, interference with um, the legal affairs, then I think we have to make clear representation to them that um, this is not a line that should be easily crossed. All officials should be clear about this principle. Dr. Kwakaki, make it brief, please. I'm not sure I can, Madam Chair, because this is an important, a serious matter, uh, legally and also um, common sense, sensibly. Um, the chief executive tried to get hold of um, a member to uh, secretly amend the document, and this is uh, very unacceptable. There are a couple of things other than following up on the issue. I hope that um, the CS uh, will be invited to join us for a special House Committee meeting. I think we need to spend a little bit more time on this issue and we would very much like to hear from the CS uh, his view uh, regarding what will be done uh, in the administration and there should not be any um, interference uh, by the executive uh, with the electrical affairs. So I hope that uh, there would be a meeting set up uh, with the CS. Well, this is not uh, part of the agenda. i just let you um, briefly make uh, some points. Vice Chair, at the meeting the CS said that they would try to understand and follow up on the issue and uh, report to us second uh, members' views uh, will certainly be um, Channel um, to the CS when we next meet him. Mr. James Toe. 
Madam Chair, you said um, you have nothing to report. I was really surprised uh, when I heard uh, from Mr. Dennis Kwok. If um, Mr. Kwok is uh, indisposed today or he is otherwise engaged, then we would have no idea uh, uh, about um, this issue being raised. I think you can say that um, this may not represent your personal opinion, but as long as uh, you have raised um, such an important subject with the CS, you should have told us. Ms. Claudia Bo. I am really surprised that at the House Committee you would say that there is nothing to report to members. You met the CS. What do you sit down with um, the CS for? Are you, are you just having tea or have a, have, uh, having a bun or something? Will you tell the CS that um, Si Wai Leung I said there would be a regular um, Q&A session here. I think he should come and uh, tell us um, uh, everything about this issue. Mr. Lam Chak Teng. Madam Chair, this is the most um, brutal intervention by the Chief Executive into electrical affairs in the history of Hong Kong. When you met the CS, um, this issue was brought up and you, you said that there was uh, nothing to report to us. Would you care to respond why you said uh, what you did? Why is it that you've got nothing much to, to, to say when you meet that this is an important issue? Uh, why, uh, why do you say um, you've got nothing to, to report to us? Right, let you have the floor and then I, I will respond uh, in a consolidated way. Mr. Jeremy Tam. Well, Madam Chair, um, you always say that uh, you met the CS and you've got nothing to report, but with such an important subject, and after meeting the CS, uh, you're not telling us uh, what happened. You brought this up with the CS. I think um, you can invite the CS to come along here. Mr. Leung Kuo Hong. You met the CS. Who is it? Matthew Zhang. I don't know what you talked about. Si Wai Leung. Um, this is something between Si Wai Leung and Holden Chow. Now he's whatever uh, investigation we conduct, uh, he can certainly um, do this in a formal channel. Dr. Helena Wong, Madam Chair, you Chairman of the House Committee, you met um, the CS uh, on behalf of us. You do have an important role to play, and you have the obligation to report to us what happened. So every time you met the CS, do you selectively report to us uh, what happened? Uh, do you exercise? Um, are you exercising your judgment on what to report and what criteria do you adopt, Mr. Raymond Chen, Madam Chair? There are many members and many members of the public who feel that um, this is um, an intervention by the chief executive. Um, into electrical affairs, that you should put this uh, to the CS whether this is the case. Now, if um, he doesn't give a clear answer to you, you better invite him here together with um, C. Y. Leung uh, for them to come before us um, for for us to put questions to them. I'd like to respond to members' questions. I met. Um, the CS in my capacity as chairman of the House Committee, the vice chairman uh, would be also invited most of the time. Um, the vice chairman also attended. Other than us, uh, we have the secretariat uh, taking part as well. So um, everybody knows uh, what was discussed. Now I attended uh, in my capacity as chairman of the House Committee. I would exercise due care. Uh, as chairman of um, the House, I would report to the CS uh, what happened at the House Committee, and I would ask um, the CS to follow up uh, on the the meeting. 
Now, this is uh, not something that happened on Friday, uh, so um, this um, doesn't fall within the, the scope of the report. Uh, at the end of the um, reporting, the vice chair uh, who attended the meeting uh, raised the issue with the CS. It happened before, and myself and the vice chair uh, said that uh, we are attending uh, the meeting in our capac capacity as um, chairman and vice chairman of um, the House Committee. We we uh, would discuss some um, things that we have consensus on, and some members requested that um, he uh, bring the matter up, and therefore he he brought the matter up uh, at the meeting. All right then, um, let's come back to item three. I've uh, promised members that uh, at our next meeting with the CS, I will be relaying um, what happened here in this count in this uh, House Committee meeting to the CS. Item three: Business arising from previous Council meetings. Legal Service Division reports on bills referred to the House Committee in accordance with Rule 54.4. One Employment Amendment Bill 2017. Legal Advisor, please uh, paper LS 68. Madam Chair, the bill seeks to amend the employment ordinance so that um, the Court or Labour Tribunal, in uh, adjudicating um, unreasonable and unfair dismissal, uh, can make a, a reinstatement or re engagement order in absence of. Um, an employer's agreement, and there can be further obligation imposed uh, upon the employers. Last year, the administration presented this um, to the fifth uh, electrical term. Um, the details are basically the same, uh, with the exception of um, the um, extra uh, compensation has gone up uh, to $72,500 from uh, 50000 the manpower panel was consulted. Members expressed um, different views. Thank you. All right, do you see the need for a bills committee? Mr. Wu Chiwai, Mr. Ho Kai Bing, and Mr. Lang Yu Chong uh, proposed a bills committee that would be further circulation. Two, Bank of Communications. Hong Kong Limited Merger Bill, uh, Paper LS 66. After the first and second reading, in accordance with 54.4 of the Rules of Procedure, this will be uh, handed over to the Health Committee, and then we decide whether we should set up Bills Committee. B. Legal Service Division Report on Substitute Legislation, Gazette of May the 12th, uh, Legal Advisor Paper LS 67. There are five items there, Madam Chair. The first two has to do with the financial institutions uh, resolution uh, ordinance. Now, uh, 77, LN 77, uh, designates um, July 7th uh, for some of the provisions to come into operation. Now, this is uh, to establish a regime for the audit of resolution of financial institutions. The three bodies. Uh, Hong Kong MA, SFC, and IA will be given the power to implement the mechanism. Um, this, um, the uncommenced provisions uh, have to do with um, the court procedures. The second is, uh, is uh, LN76. This is um, the Financial Institutions Resolution Ordinance Commence uh, uh, Protect Arrangement Regulation. The Regarding uh, this is in relation to securities transfer instrument, the property transfer instrument, or bail-in instrument. The idea is to protect six types of financial arrangements and the economic effect. All the details are set out in paragraph five. Uh, this uh, we go into effect on the seventh of July, twenty seventeen. The panel. Uh, on financial affairs was consulted on April the 18th. Members did not raise any objection. All right, for the first two notices, uh, do you see the need for a subcommittee? Dr. Kokaki proposes a subcommittee. Mr. James Toe um, will be joining. Legal advisor, please. The next one is um, the Employees Retraining Ordinance Amendment of Schedule 2, Number 2, Notice 2017. And 
The notice will <coughs> remove two training bodies from Schedule 2, and the effect is these two training bodies can no longer provide or conduct retraining courses. Uh, the uh, order took effect on the uh, 12th of uh, May when it was gazetted. Any request to set up a subcommittee to follow up? No. Then uh, please go on. Another uh, is uh, UN sanctions regulations. Uh, the uh, is not required to be required to uh, logical and is not subject to amendment. The first is UN sanctions Central African Republic. Republic Regulation 2017 and UN Sanctions Yemen Regulations 2015 Amendment Regulations are giving effect uh, to sanctions by the UN on these two places and uh, also a ban on uh, people moving in out of these places. All right. For these two subsidiary legislation items on UN sanctions, I suggest that we pass them on to the subcommittee on UN sanctions to examine, okay, to members of questions. For items 1 and 2, subcommittees will be set up. For legal notices, where subcommittees have to be set up, may I remind you that the deadline for scrutiny is the 14th of June. And it can be extended to the 5th of July to the sitting, dated the 5th of July, if an exemption is granted. Now, for one, uh, since uh, there is no proposal to set up subcommittee, now for those who are proposed uh, on the 17th of uh, May to uh, the Council, then the deadline for amendments is the 14th of June. Item 4. Federal Business for Council meeting of 24th of May 2017, tabling of tables. Report number 18 of the House Committee on Consideration of Subsidiation and Other Instruments. They cover 10 items of subsidiarization where the um, uh, amendment deadline falls on the 24th of May. No members have asked to speak on these items. And then, members' motion. Proposed resolution to be moved by Dr. Lowai Court under Section 344 of the Interpretation and General Clauses Ordinance, Cap 1, in relation to the promotion of recycling and proper disposal of electronic equipment and electronic equipment amendment ordinance 2016, commencement notice 2017. The purpose of uh, this motion is to extend uh, the um, period uh, for amendment to the 14th of June. Business for Council meeting of the 31st of May 2017. 22 have been scheduled, covering six oral and uh, 16 written questions, respectively. Bills first reading and a moving of second reading. No notice has been received yet, and government motion none whatsoever. Members' motion. On the 17th of May, the Council was not able to uh, deal with members' motions. So, um, motions already assigned uh, to uh, the sitting will be dealt with according to the original order. Next, the cease question and answer session on the 1st of June 2017 to be held at 9.30 to 11 a.m. 7. Reports of Bills Committee and subcommittee report of the Bills Committee on Inner Revenue Amendment Number 3, Bill 2017. Uh, Mr. Kenneth Long, Chairman of the Bills Committee, will give a verbal report. Inland Revenue Amendment Number 3, Bill 2017, is to amend the Inland Revenue Ordinance Cap 112 to mandate financial institutions in Hong Kong to conduct due diligence and collect the required information from account holders who are tax residents of prospective and confirmed partners of Hong Kong in respect of automatic exchange of financial account information in tax matters hereafter referred to as AEOI, and report the information to the Inland Revenue Department for exchange with the reportable jurisdictions. The Bills Committee has no objection to the Bill in principle. In the course of its deliberations, 
the Bills Committee has discussed the criteria for amending the list of reportable jurisdictions, issues relating to data collection, safeguards to protect taxpayers' privacy and confidentiality of information exchanged, and publicity on the revived, revised AEOI arrangements. The Bills Committee has provided suggestions to the Administration regarding how to reduce the compliance burden on financial institutions arising from AEOI data collection and reporting, such as phasing in the reportable jurisdictions by batches and providing financial institutions with certain options in the scope of data submission in the first reporting year of 2018. The administration has considered these suggestions but maintains the view that the current proposal under the bill has struck a balance of all factors, including expansion of AEOI network, a level playing field for AEOI participants, and assurance of data security. The administration has advised that it will adopt a facilitating approach and keep the compliance burden of financial institutions to a minimum. The administration has proposed committee stage amendments to the bill to include Turkey in the list of reportable jurisdictions and to defer the first reporting year for AEOI with Korea from 2018 to 2019. The Bills Committee has examined and agreed to the amendments. The Bills Committee supports the resumption of the second reading debate on the bill at a council meeting of 7 June 2017 and will not propose any amendment to the bill. The written report of the Bills Committee will be submitted in due course. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lang. May I remind members that if you have uh, amendments to move, the deadline for giving notice is the uh, 27th of May. Uh, next, uh, we also got uh, com Bills Committee report uh, from the uh, Committee on Arbitration Amendment Bill 2017. Thank you, Chairman. We have completed our work, and uh, the bill seeks to um, allow arbitration uh, to deal with uh, IR disputes, and that it is not contrary to the public policy of Hong Kong to enforce arbitral awards involving IPRs, and updates the list of contracting parties to the Convention on the Recognition and Enforcement of Foreign Arbitral Awards done at New York. Uh, we focus on uh, the definition and of IP and whether that is arbitrable, and also the registration. And also uh, the um, relief, enforcement, and registration, and also uh, fees and time that can be saved by means of arbitration, and whether the bill can ensure competition. Details of uh, the deliberations of the BC can be found in the report. The administration told us that uh, the provisions will be implemented in phases. We have no objection to the second reading debate of the bill on the uh, 14th of June 2017. Thank you. May I remind members that if you intend to move amendments to the bill, the deadline for giving notice is the 5th of June, Monday. Position on bills committee and subcommittees. As at the 18th of May, Thursday, there are 10 bills committee in operation, two of which we have to continue with this examination work after three months it has started the work. And then there are 14 subcommittees under the HC and five uh, subcommittee uh, on policy studies. And there are uh, seven subcommittees for uh, policy uh, issues on waiting list. Next, uh, we have uh, proposals to move a motion under Rule 90. 49B, one of the rules of procedure, is a council meeting to censure Mr. Holden Chow. We have letters from Ms. Claudia Mill and from Dr. Kwakaki, respectively. Ms. Mill and Dr. Kwak have uh, written uh, to the uh, HC asking her for a motion to be moved to Reverend Council. May I draw members' attention to 
the fact that uh, the basis uh, for moving of a central motion is um, due to Basic Law 797. Uh, so long as uh, there are a joint petition by three members and before giving notice, then such a motion can be moved under the mechanism. If uh, the matter is uh, committed to a committee, then uh, a report is due after consideration by the committee before we vote on the central motion. I'll first invite Ms. Mo and Dr. Kwokaki to speak respectively, and then I will invite Mr. Holden Chow to respond. And the members may uh, express your views on the uh, suggestions by the two members. Uh, because uh, the subcommittee was held behind camera at the last uh, last time, so uh, when you would like to uh, quote uh, from the subcommittee and or select committee, ensure that you will only be quoting information already uh, in the public domain. Dr. Kwokaki would like to discuss the. Uh, uh, way forward for the operation of the select committee. I'd like to mention that the select committee uh, it was not appointed by this HC nor is it under the HC. Uh, the select committee was set up under ROP 26. Under ROP 76, the uh, membership chairman and uh, vice chairman and uh, members of uh, the um, select committee has been appointed after decision by the um, council. Since the select committee is going to come to a meeting to discuss issues uh, relating to Mr. Holden Chow's uh, incident, may I draw members' attention to that fact? I invite um, Ms. Claudia Mo to speak first. Uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Kwokaki, for a point of order. Now, because uh, we are discussing a matter related to Mr. Holden Cha, who is also uh, uh, your party member, to ensure that our discussion can be seen to be a fair, uh, which uh, will also be uh, to your, in your interest. So, may I suggest that somebody other than you chair this part of our meeting to be more appropriate? <laughs> Any other members, please? Mr. Jeffrey Lam on the same point. Speakers of mic. Mr. Jeffrey Lam, please speak, switch on the microphone for Mr. Lam. Uh, this is just a complaint against a member, not against a certain party. So I think it is okay for you to continue to chair this meeting. Mr. Chang Kwok Kwan. So, Dr. Kwokaki uh, expressed uh, dissatisfaction that you're going to chair this meeting now because you are from the same political party of Mr. Chow. But I've heard many uh, comments uh, made by Mr. Dennis Kwok, Vice Chairman of uh, this House Committee. He has uh, very uh, clear and uh, well conceived views about this. So, if, uh, Chairman, you cannot chair this meeting, uh, neither can the vice chair do so. In fact, uh, the uh, chair is here just to direct their meeting. So I don't think uh, we have uh, to follow Dr. Kwok's suggestion. Does any member wish to speak? Perhaps I, I will allow members to speak first, uh, very briefly, before I make a decision. Vice Chairman, may I respond to uh, points, uh, the point made by Mr. John Kwok? When I'm going to excuse myself because Indeed, I've spoken on this matter, so I don't think I'm in the right capacity to chair this part of the meeting, Miss Claudia Mo. I think you have uh, to do justice to uh, Dr. Kwokaki. Now, Mr. Dr. Kwokaki only requested that you considered excusing yourself, and I invite you to excuse yourself because, of, in the first place, you're chairman of DAB, and you've also spoken to the media. Are telling us that you have uh, discussed uh, with Mr. Holden Chow this issue. So whether there is any conflict of interest or conflict of role, I think you need to uh, consider <coughs> this very carefully. Mr. Chong Kwok, Mr. Lang Kwok Hong, uh, hang on, yes. Mr. Really. 
should not be the chairman of uh, this part of the meeting because uh, he is, she is a member of DAB. They are of the same political party. Well, if you insist, uh, then then um, we can't do anything about it. But it would be a good idea for you to step aside. You don't have to argue over that. Uh, a waste of time. Dr. Henry Le Wong, Madam Chair, to make the uh, committee more efficient as chairman of the DAB and with such close relationship with um, Mr. Wooden Chow. I think uh, uh, for you to chair the meeting, um, it will not um, help with um, the efficiency of our work. Uh, so I suggest that um, you vacate uh, your, your chair uh, for this. All right. Uh, I I'm having a regard to the ROP uh, regarding the disclosure of uh, pecuniary interest. 83A of the ROP doesn't restrict the chairman uh, from uh, presiding over the meeting on this particular issue. I don't have any pecuniary interest, and I do not believe that there would be any conflict of interest. This meeting is conducted in public. Uh, whether I am conducting the meeting uh, fairly uh, will be subject to uh, public uh, scrutiny. So I will be presiding over the meeting in accordance with an ROP. This is my decision, although I've heard what you have to say. Ms. Claudia Mo, three minutes, please. Madam Chair, it was this morning that I learned um, Mr. Holden Chow uh, has um, recused himself from the Select Committee on UGL. Uh, he resigned a little bit too late, I think uh, better late than never. I mean, it would be far better for him to recuse himself. He said that he hasn't hidden anything, he hasn't breached uh, any rules or any laws. In fact, uh, public perception shows that uh, he has uh, something to hide and he has breached um, the rules and regulations. Back in uh, back on 6th of March, C.Y. Si Leung um, uh, file legal proceedings against uh, Mr. Kenneth Long, and it wasn't until May the 17th that he discovered that uh, Mr. Kenneth Long uh, is not suited to be a member of the select committee. Now this is precisely the time uh, when the scandal uh, is uh, all over the place involving uh, Mr. Houghton Chow. People get the perception that uh, Mr. Houghton Chow is um, a double agent for Si Wai Leung at the Select Committee. Si Wai Leung. It is clear that at the Select Committee, um, Mr. Houghton Chow is a pawn uh, at the Select Committee for Si Wai Leung. You see, you haven't. Uh, anything to hide? Why didn't you tell the chairman and everybody that um, the document uh, was amended personally by the CE? You admitted to that uh, only after it was exposed. Now there is um, uh, a clear moral principle that the executive uh, is not supposed to interfere with the legislature. You you uh, you did that. Um, Without thinking about the consequences, as legal member, uh, you have to um, avoid uh, doing anything which uh, constitutes misconduct. Uh, you're serving the members of um, the public uh, in the Hong Kong SAR. It seems that uh, you're serving the chief executive. Now you may argue that um, these are agreed facts uh, between lawyers. The Select Committee is uh, looking into declaration of um, interests, and I think what you did uh, is wholly ridiculous. Well, I hope that um, um, we have to be clear that um, there is such um, uh, such an undesirable person in the DAB. Dr. Kokaki, well, the 
select committee members are acting in public interest. Clearly, C. Y. Long uh, has uh, received uh, fifty million dollars from UGL. There are a lot of um, unclear uh, issues. Um, there are seven pro-establishment members and four are non-establishment members on the select committee. It would be hard uh, to be unfair to uh, C. Y. Long. But as a member of the Select Committee, Mr. Houghton Chow, uh, he was uh, Vice Chairman of um, the Select Committee, he disregarded the authority conferred upon him by LegCo. He, he ceased to have any more credibility. There is public expect expectation that uh, well, I, we will be able to get to the bottom of the truth. If the Chief Executive uh, has collected uh, as much as fifty million dollars. It would be unacceptable. Also, according to reports, in the two pages um, there were forty amendments. Had it not been for the media report, nobody would have known that C. Y. Long could have instructed uh, Holden Child to. Make forty amendments. We have faith in the system. We have faith uh, in the council. And he is a legal member here. How can we be accountable to the voters who put us here? For him to step down from the select committee, uh, a vice chairmanship. Uh, represents the minimum that he has to do, but he doesn't command the trust of the members of the public. It is the duty of the council to censure those members uh, who do not fulfil their duties. We do have um, the, the duty to do so. Pro establishment members may have um, different views, but this is not a matter. Or uh, for uh, Mr. Chow, if we turn a blind eye uh, to this, if we allow uh, this um, undesirable trend to continue, then there would be bad unless you you are prepared to become the puppet of C. Y. Long, at the back and core of C. Y. Long. Uh, unless uh, you turn a blind eye to uh, C. Y. Long, um, trying to manipulate um, the select committee, I think we have to censure Holden Chow, Mr. Chow. Thank you, Madam Chair. Ms. Cordimo and Dr. Kwokaki moves uh, move from this censure motion, and this um, represents um, a spear um, of me. And I, I think they have played um, everything out of proportion. I think I feel obligated to make a response. In dealing with the UGL investigation, I've never breached um, any law or any regulation. I've always uh, hoped that the investigation uh, can be fair and just. The proposed scope uh, of uh, investigation is an open document. Everybody can comment on this. I have so much uh, to say about this uh, proposed uh, scope of investigation because um, th there is a lot of uh, inconsistencies uh, with facts. If there is such inconsistency with facts, um, and we leave it uh, uncorrected, then the investigation will be incomplete and unfair. So it is um, always my hope that the scope of inquiry uh, should be consistent with um, open facts. That's why I've uh, made so many comments. That's why I consider that the document should be revised. I like to reiterate. That in dealing with uh, this issue, I've never hidden anything. I've never breached um, any law or regulations. I hope that um, members will not, by uh, censoring, uh, moving this censure uh, motion, uh, uh, try to smear me. Thank you, Dr. P. H. Chen. Two minutes. Two minutes, Madam Chair. Mr. Holden Chow. Has uh, recused himself uh, from the select committee 
on um, the uh, on UGL uh, saga uh, on uh, this motion uh, moved by um, Ms. Claudia Bo and um, Dr. Kokaki, I'd like to say something. BL73 provides for the function of LegCo. It is um, the function of LegCo to uh, monitor the uh, chief executive, um, see uh, whether um, there is um, um, there is any misconduct. So, as LegCo member, we have to uh, monitor the the, um, the governance. We have to make sure that um, the the officials have, would be sensitive to this uh, issue. That the select committee is formed uh, to for this particular purpose. Mr. Chow uh, submitted uh, a paper to the select committee, and the paper originated from the chief executive uh, office. He admitted that um, the CE uh, did approach him. Now, for the uh, scope of inquiry, there were forty amendments made. The chief executive is a subject of investigation. He said he has the right to make comments, and uh, Mr. Chow um, consolidated his comments and made the submission. Now, many uh, or some members of the public um, asked me um, to reflect their views, although they are not voting for me. They hope that Lechko um, should not take the people of Hong Kong as fools. We understand that uh, whatever happened has already happened, and the explanation seems to be unconvincing. The time is uh, running short. I hope that we will deal with this issue uh, seriously because the public um, is keeping an eye on our work. Dr. Priscilla Lau. <coughs> In December last year, um, I joined um, this select committee on UGC, oh, sorry, UGL. Please let me have the time back. Order, please. Order, please. I've lost seven seconds. Madam Chair, I would have thought that um, the UGL Select Committee uh, can get on with um, the investigation into uh, CY Long. And the meeting held on um, the 25th of April was a closed door meeting, and I had to uh, rush off uh, to another meeting. We uh, didn't ask uh, for any conclusion to be made, and we asked for another meeting uh, for the uh, select committee to, to handle the motions moved by Ms. Claudembo and Dr. Kwokaki. Uh, hang on a sec. Um, Dr. Priscilla Long. Mr. Kenneth Long, uh, what point of order? Well, I think um, Dr. Priscilla Long uh, talked about the details of the closed door meeting. She is not supposed to dis divulge um, the, the details of that closed door meeting. Mr. Kenneth Long, this is no point of order. Please uh, carry on. I'm pleased uh, that they attach so much importance to the rules and regulations. As a member of um, the select committee, who I have to deal with the point of order. Ms. Tanya Chen, Madam Chair, before we started um, on this subject, uh, you did remind members that on this particular issue, members are not supposed to divulge the details of the closed door meeting. I wasn't part of that meeting, but I think. Um, since um, the member I was um, speaking, I mean, this member was a part of the select committee. I'm not sure whether she divulged anything. It seems as if um, that that um, she had to rush off to another meeting, and she uh, left a message that, um, that there shouldn't be any conclusion drawn. Yet, I don't really want to hear anything about the details of the closed door meeting. Please. Be reminded that um, the details of um, the closed door meeting have been divulged. As um, chairman of um, the House Committee, I think the details have been divulged. I believe. I, I'm not uh, debating you here. I. I. 
there is no ROP to allow me to uh, implement an, a motion passed in the relevant select committee. I invite Chairman of uh, the select committee, Mr. Portier, to discuss with his members how that can be enforced. I uh, said I asked members only to quote uh, uh, information already in the uh, public domain. Well, it's been uh, reported in the open that I had to uh, attend another meeting. So do your homework. You can check. Uh, many um, reports have said that, that I had to attend another meeting. These two motions moved uh, by these two members uh, show no respect for the select committee. I express my dissatisfaction and regret. Wait for us to complete our meeting this afternoon. Allow the select committee to complete the work entrusted to us by members. We haven't had a chance, and then you cannot wait to do so at the House Committee. So, starting from this moment, I really have to consider whether Select Committee can continue to operate as in the past. Regarding the last part of uh, Dr. Kwakaki's motion, it's worth uh, discussing. Uh, should we um, dismiss the Select committee and form another one, Mr. Nathan Law. Mr. Holden Chow directly assisted Siwa Leung to uh, interfere with the work of the select committee. This is a serious matter. Lack of integrity and dereliction of duty apply to Mr. Holden Chow. Most of uh, the members are returned from uh, by elections, and then views from the public can be reflected to the select committee. Perhaps a uh, Holden Chow lacks computer knowledge. I don't know. He passed uh, the um, amendments with. Uh, tracked changes to the sectariat, and yet he insists even now that he was not trying to hide anything. It's just like a student cheating in his examination, and he argued that uh, he was perfectly honest, and it's just like a burglar a caught red-handed, and then I saying that uh, if I uh, wanted to hide anything, I wouldn't have uh, put the stolen property at home. So we're allowing the target of investigation to interfere with our scope of investigation. This uh, should not be allowed in any investigatory body. So many members here have seen how the subject has distorted the facts. Although he has uh, recluse himself of uh, the duty of the select committee, he has still insisted he insists that he has done nothing wrong. So I support the two censure motions by members. I urge members to uh, take uh, the duties of legislators seriously. Mr. Lam Chuck Ting, what I'm going to speak will certainly not divulge anything of our closed door meeting. First, Mr. Holden Chow said that he had not hidden anything. However, in uh, the meeting in April, he said time and again that the amended terms of reference by Mr. By Leung, by Siwa Leung was his own work. So he was lying. He was deceiving the public. Mr. Lam Shak Ting, a point of order. Ms. Elizabeth Quad, a point of order. He said right from the start that he would not divulge the content of our meeting. But what he was saying was exactly what was discussed in the meeting. Lam Chak Ting, Mr. Lam Chak Ting, please continue. I only suggested to members to quote from information available in the public domain. Mr. Lam Chak Ting, well, the meeting, the April meeting I referred to was an open meeting. I invited um, Dr. Elizabeth Quad to listen more carefully before she uh, responds. All right. The uh, 
copy from Mr. Holden Chow was printed out. There was no electronic copy. We could not see the changes made by Si Wan Leung if it was uh, not concealing it from us. What it is? Well, he talked about maintaining or upholding justice. Does that mean that he has to engage in secret talks with uh, Si Wan Leung? Is Si Wan Leung the uh, fairest uh, person in Hong Kong? Why hasn't he declared that he has discussed with Si Wan Leung? He has repeatedly deceived the council as well as the public. Holden Chow has made repeated mistakes. The first mistake was he said at the meeting that he, he, he the copy or the document came from himself. Secondly, he said that he had not hide anything. Well, you are only supporting Si Wan Leung. You are acting for Si Wan Leung. You're not carrying out your duty as a lawmaker. While you, in fact, you are double agents of Si Wan Leung in this council. You are not standing on Hong Kong people's side. Uh, you should step down. You are not qualified to be a lawmaker. Mrs. Regina Ip, Si Wan Leung really hasn't handled this well. If he had any views, he should have uh, sent it to the select committee directly. If he had strong views, he could come to give evidence in camera with the select committee. He should not have asked uh, a lawmaker to do it on his behalf. So I feel aggrieved for Mr. Holden Chow. He's a scapegoat. I think uh, he has learned a lesson. He has been so severely uh, scolded by members. I have uh, carefully examined the censure motion in my eight years as a legislator. There was only one motion to censure. Can I why? No, no, you have not gone to that stage yet. You have not gone to that stage yet. I've checked. Well, we voted on uh, the motion involving Kam Nai Wai. Uh, he was accused of uh, sexual harassment. So, uh, 27 opposed, uh, 0, 4, and 24 abstentions. So, Lechko did not support the uh, motion to censure him. I was not involved in uh, the voting. I don't think we should censure uh, Mr. Chow after all. He is young and in and, and ex inexperienced lawmaker, and I think we should uh, put an end to this matter. Mr. Dennis Kwok. Mrs. Regina uh, Ip said that uh, Mr. Holden Chow knew that he was wrong. I haven't heard anything to this effect from him. He said right from the beginning that he had not breached the rules, he had not hidden anything. Holden Chow, you are also a lawyer. Please do not insult the legal sector. You uh, you pretended many, many times that such uh, amendments came from you and you had to uh, ensure that uh, they are acceptable to you, this and that. You haven't followed the rules. Now, if Si Wan Leung came to you, uh, when Si Wan Leung came to you, you should tell him that uh, he can, he could directly forward such um, views to the Secretariat, which will then circulate all the views to members, saying that this is the Si Wan Leung's views. These, this is the rule. How dare you say that there is no breach of the rules? If you continue to say that there is no concealment and no uh, breaching of uh, rules, uh, what you have uh, breached, though, only you will know. There is no sense of remorse at all. So uh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Regina Yip. How can we forgive him? Your pardon comes too easily. We have uh, to let him see that there's a price to pay. Otherwise, he will not have a sense. Uh, any remorse. So would you still insist that you have not breached the rules, you have not concealed anything? Is that your position? If that's the case, we will not let you go here. You are smearing. You have uh, belittled the procedures of LegCo. Aren't you ashamed, Holden Chow? Mr. Wong Kwok Kin, the select committee is going to meet very soon. 
and we will uh, we'll try to draw a conclusion on this matter. Hopefully, prior to that, we will strictly adhere to the rule of confidentiality, and therefore, FTU members here are not entirely uh, um, aware of uh, the uh, in and out of the matter. So a few members have come out and commented on the uh, information in a very high profile manner and it's all lopsided, it's very unfair and FTU members have no choice but to vote against uh, this motion. For, for myself, I'm in the no, I will for sure vote against uh, these motions. I will only support the last part of Dr. Kwokaki's letter, and that is to how to deal with the way forward of select committee, uh, whether the members concerned should uh, resign from the select committee and whether the select committee should be dissolved first and let it uh, be reformed. This is because this is already um, my wrestling. We are only We act like a school of sharks, a wool, a pack of wolves, fighting among ourselves. Even though the select committee has come to a decision, and uh, they have uh, immediately come out to ask to disqualify a member, isn't it uh, too uh, over? Um, aren't you being too uh, eager? So. I support you, Dr. Kwokaki. The last part of the motion, dissolve the select committee and reform a new one. Dr. Cheng Chongtai, thank you. I do agree that this is a really um, uh, mud wrestling because this is not just a election of duty as a law maker. Ms. Odin Chow has conducted misconduct in public office. Well, there are only two criteria to satisfy. First, abuse of power, and second, uh, misbehavior. Even though he is not engaged in any uh, corrupt uh, conduct or he may not have gained any monetary advantage, he can still be prosecuted. In fact, uh, he was um, exercising a power under the basic law, and that is a uh, uh, under ROP, if two thirds of our members have agreed to set up a select committee to uh, carry out certain um, duties, then uh, Mr. Odin Chow was discharging duties as a lawmaker. However, he engaged in uh, misconduct and uh, he abused his power. He privately communicated uh, with the subject of our investigation. So this is not just misbehavior. This is not just concealment or uh, breaching of our rules. It is an illegal act. And uh, you may recall a former counselor, Mr. Chen Kainam, used his position as a lawmaker to solicit confidential information from LCSD, and he was uh, sentenced uh, to jail under uh, the um, misconduct in public office rule, although he had no monetary gain, uh, that was already a criminal offense. So members from the pro-establishment camp and in fact everyone here knows very clear that your time is up. This is n not just a breach of the ru rules, but it's illegal. Dr. Anna Wong, we do care about upholding the uh, dignity, the uh, independence and autonomy of uh, the council. Ms. Oden Chow is a member, is a representative of the council when he is a member of the select committee to probe a conduct of the CE. However, he has not declared that he has shown his document to CY Leung, who has subsequently made more than 14, 40 changes, and he claimed that those were his views. So, you have mixed up your roles and functions as a legislator. 
you act like an accomplice of Siwan Leung, and you've interfered with an independent probe by the council. I think we have to ponder an issue. Uh, those investigated, uh, Lin Xihua, uh, Zhou Yongkang, uh, Guo Boshong, will the central authorities allow um, these people um, to approach a CCDI and revise um, the scope of investigation to be conducted by CCDI? I heard that um, Mr. Holden Chow or the DAB would address this issue. What you did is um, try to pull the wool over the eyes of LegCo and the members of the public. You have undermined the credibility of the council. This is a very serious matter. Now, we don't understand uh, why uh, Mr. Holden Chow has uh, to resign uh, from the um, committee. You resign from the committee, and here you're sitting here, you said that you've done no wrong. I don't really understand. Mr. Roy Kwok, this is so disappointing, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, Mr. Chow is saying that he has uh, nothing to hide. He has breached uh, no law, uh, no rules. This is like a Watergate uh, issue. Uh, had it not been uh, for the uh, great feature of uh, Microsoft Word, uh, everybody would have uh, been kept in the dark. Holden Chow is like a jury. He cannot uh, really solicit um, comments had it not been for the great feature of um, the tracking function of um, the, the Microsoft Word. Uh, we, we, we would have been kept in the dark. Um, Mrs. Uh, Regina Ip has said he has learned a lesson. If you think that you've done no wrong, then why do you have um, to resign? You may argue that um, this, this has got nothing to do with this. Now, this is a very serious um, blow to, to the Council. I've never heard of um, a committee where the committee would be uh, having close uh, relationship with um, the subject being investiga investigated. I think this is a really daft move on your part. Uh, to quote from Stephen Ng of the FTU. He, he may have learned a lesson, but you haven't admitted that this is um, a wrongdoing. Now, this is a Hong Kong version of uh, Watergate. If uh, Let's Go doesn't act, then I'm concerned that uh, Let's Go is um, a really a sick. We're moving this uh, motion because we still believe that uh, let's go members should uh, bring the public voices here in, into this council. Ms. Gary Chen. Madam Chair, Mr. Holden Chow has um, already explained um, himself on this issue. He decided to um, resign from the committee. He is a new member. He may not be as good as uh, as good uh, at playing politics as the, the Democrats. Since uh, he has resigned, I think we have to draw this to a close. Madam Chair, I'm not a member of the Select Committee, but I'm concerned about one thing. I noticed that uh, four pan-democratic members have um, talked about um, the details of the uh, closed-door meeting, and this would affect the uh, fairness and equity of um, the Select Committee. Now, I was um, part of a committee to investigate uh, into Mr. Tim Timothy Tong. Now, before the report uh, was out, there were uh, media um, reports on the details that Mr. Abram Shek was um, very anxious that this should not happen. He has written to all of us uh, to make sure that, that um, we're going to have a report uh, which will be just and fair. Unfortunately, in this particular incident, there were members who claimed uh, to be a former ICAC investigator, but this member uh, has taken the, taken the lead uh, to divulge um, the content 
of um, the Seneca Vigil. That that explains why um, his short spell at um, the ICAC. Most ironically, there are some. Mr. Gary Chen, uh, hang on. Point of order. I think uh, Mr. Chen is imputing motive to members. What facts do you have? Do you know why um, Mr. Lam um, is no longer working in the ICAC? Now, you imply that it has been sacked. Now, this is a very serious allegation. It has to be dealt with. Dr. Helena Wong, well, Madam Chair, this is a very serious allegation. He has to have um, evidence. Otherwise, I would ask uh, Mr. Chen to retract uh, his comments. What what um, words uh, do you want me to um, to pass a ruling on? Where well, he suggested that um, Mr. Lam Chok Ting left the ICAC, and it has uh, something to do with um, um, personal uh, integrity. Um, or personal abilities. Now, this is smearing uh, another member. I don't think um, the the honourable member should be uh, saying anything like that. He should retract uh, his words. Miss Claudia Mbo, Madam Chair, you you should not uh, make life difficult for members. Well, you have to to point out the point of order. I think um, forty one, forty one four and five. He has offended uh, Mr. Lam Chak Ting. He has um, uh, speculated uh, on on um, what, what happened to Mr. Um, Mr. Lam, Mr. Raymond Chen. I hope uh, Mr. Gary Chen uh, would point out what details uh, Mr. Lam divulged uh, from the Coastal meeting. Mr. Ben Chen, Madam Chair. I think they're imputing motive to Mr. Gary Chen. Now he said he hasn't got a long spell in the ICAC, and he left uh, not after a long period. Now that's a fact, Madam Chair, Mr. Tan Chen. I can tell you uh, what point of order. That's ROP forty-one four and five. I don't have um, to to view the tape again. Uh, he said that um, a former ICAC investigator divulged him the details of the closed door meeting, and that's the reason why he hasn't got a long spell at the ICAC. If this is not offensive remark, what is it? We we'll have to go back to the tape. Dr. Enjo. Well, Madam Chair, I didn't hear. Um, from Mr. Gary Chen, who he was talking about, I didn't hear the name. I didn't hear the name being mentioned. Also, Ms. Tanya Chen said that Mr. Gary Chen breached uh, ROP forty-one bracket four and five. Let me put this to you, uh, Ms. Tanya Chen. Uh, bracket four is some um, offensive uh, remarks. Uh, what? Did he say which um, is offensive? Number five, imputing improper motive to another member. Let me, let me put this to you. Uh, who are you referring to? Can you name a name who has in, in, imputed improper motive? Can you name a name, please? Dr. Angel, you have to speak to the chair. All right, every single one of you has to speak to the chair. You're not supposed to yell in your seat. Mr. Lung Kuo Hong, point of order. Point of order. Mr. Lung Kuo Hong, be quiet. Why do we allow some people who look like human beings uh, to speak? Well, that's not point of order. There is a request for me to. Um, give uh, my ruling whether Mr. Gary Chen has uh, been offensive. Mr. Lam Chok Ting, uh, Mr. Tanya Chen, uh, you've spoken on these um, on three occasions. If you get the floor to speak, that is. 
Mr. Lemchuk Ting. Mr. Lemchuk Ting. Madam Chair, today uh, we are discussing Mr. Houghton Chow's issue. I think uh, whoever uh, has um, a clear record uh, would have a clear record. It is uh, my honor to be part of the ICAC. Uh, Mr. Gary Chen, uh, you are my senior uh, at uh, CUHK. I feel ashamed of what you said. I think we have to come back to this collusion between CY Leung and Holden Chow. Let's come back to this very issue. Right from uh, Mr. Lam said he doesn't feel that he was offended. So I'm not going to give any ruling. Madam Chair, this is not what I meant. I just don't want to get bogged down on the issue. Mr. Kerry Chen, please. Please. Well, we're here till quarter past four. We don't have very much time. Mr. Gary Chen, please. Madam Chair, I didn't name anyone uh, who divulged um, the secrets. I didn't name anyone uh, who didn't have a long spell. Now, if um, you, you say that this is Lam Chak Teng, there is nothing I, uh, I can do about it, but I, I feel ashamed to have such a, a junior um, CUHK a fellow classmate. 41-4. Uh, Mr. Nahid, uh, Mr. Gary Chen has mentioned the former ICAC investigator, and that that's uh, Lam Chak Teng. Uh, can you can you name anyone who is um, who fits the bill? Even if uh, Mr. Lam Chak Teng is uh, magnanimous, what Mr. Gary Chen uh, said that uh, would amount to offensive remarks, and. It doesn't say that it's um, for the person being criticized um, to, to bring up the issue. As a legal member, I think that um, he has to retract his words, which are offensive, and has to offer an apology. As chairman of the House Committee, I don't really know um, the member's background. Madam, Madam Chair, I teach uh, Hong Kong politics. I understand full well um, who is um, a former ICS investigator. If you don't know, um, should we uh, have a, have an adjournment and and then um, conduct some um, some probe? I mean, you are shielding uh, your fellow uh, party member. That's why I sa I said that you shouldn't be chairman of this committee. Well. First of all, um, definitely he was talking about uh, Lam Chuk Ting. I'm talking about uh, Mr. Gary Chan's remarks. He did talk about Lam Chuk Ting. Dr. N. Jung, please, um, you might wish to have a look at the, the tape. And he also talked about the background of the member as um, an ex ICAC officer. Third, he said that uh, this. Um, this person is a member of um, the select committee. There are three elements that that um, are pointing to the fact that he was talking about Lam Chak Ting. As a member, we have to to highlight um, things that are that are offensive. Now, Mr. Lam Chak Ting is uh, really magnanimous. I think we have to focus our attention on um, holding Chow's easy. Ms. Tanya Chen, I, I I'm not done yet. Make it brief, make it quick. I've given you enough time. Which which words are offensive? Well, you 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 you're pretending um, not to remember. You have to point out which sentence. You said it hasn't got a long spell. That this is not um, offensive. Well, not a sentence. The whole paragraph. Doctor N. Jung. Point of order, Madam Chair, Miss Tanya Chen. If she feels that uh, Mr. Gary Chen has um, violated uh, ROP forty-one four and five, then I'd like to put this to her: What has uh, Mr. Gary Chen breached? Otherwise, I think uh, Miss Tanya Chen has uh, breached uh, ROP forty-one five. He is imputing improper motive to another member. Are you with me, Madam Chair? 
So I think that we have to ask uh, Mr. Tanya Chen to make it specific what is improper, what a motive which is improper. Ms. Tanya Chen, I'd to say that I have never imputed any improper motive <laughs> to Gary Chen. Please do not uh, put everything numb together and numb everything together. So, Ms. Gary Chen, have you, Chairman? I did not mention lamb chucking in my previous remarks. All right, we go back to this theme, Mr. Lang Yu Chung. Yes, we would. I'd like to go back to the main issue that is about Holden Chow. Priscilla Lang said that we shouldn't uh, be dealing with this issue. We should wait until the select committee has met. I think these two are different. The select committee has its own work to do. We will not uh, be in the way. However, this motion is about the integrity of Holden Chow. This has nothing to do with the select committee, whether he has uh, hidden anything, whether he has breached the rules, so on and so forth. This has nothing to do with the work of the select committee. While I'm not a member of the select committee, well, uh, I only got my knowledge about the incident from the media. According to the media, Mr. Holden Chow claimed that everything originated from himself and even Siwa Leung has uh, admitted that uh, he made amendments personally to the document. So how can that be, um, how can that align with what Mr. Holden Chow said? Although some of us tried to uh, defend him by saying that he was young, he was inexperienced. But in fact, this has got nothing to do with his age and experience. This is about uh, his integrity and principles he uphold. This is about how whether a lawmaker can do what he is expected to do. Many members have quoted from Article 79. If a motion initiated jointly by one fourth of all members of the electrical charges to see with serious breach of law, direction of duty, so and so forth, there should be an investigation. This is a serious investigation, and then uh, we have to address the integrity of the members concerned. Now, I draw a line here after three more members have spoken. Dr. Fernando Joe. Our discussion. as well as uh, the fact that Mr. Holden Chow is the vice chairman of the select committee. And he um, privately communicated with Siu Leung the subject of the investigation. And then he amended the scope of the investigation according to Siu Leung's views. He first said that it was his own opinion. And then when everything was exposed, he had no choice but to admit it to it and then uh, today he said that he had not breached the rules and I think this is a perfect example of a direction of duty. Censuring him is already the lightest punishment. I think he should resign at once to apologize to the community. Unfortunately, he is not going to do it and uh, Chairman, your party of course will uh, be behind him. In the foregone discussion, Gary Lam, Gary Chen launched personal attacks at Lam Chak Ting, and then he denied afterwards. And all your party members came out to uh, deny everything. We are setting a very bad example to the community and to children. How those in power have consistently refused to apologize, to confess, and uh, to uh, say sorry, even though they for sure made a mistake. Ms. Olin Chow, I think you are a father yourself. You have to be accountable to your own children. 
I think you should apologize to your family members back home. Mr. Andrew Wen. Dr. Priscilla Leung said that when he joined the select committee, he want, she wanted to focus on the agreement between Siwa Leung and uh, UGL and also the details whether uh, it was um, perfectly legal and legitimate. I think that is the intention of all who joined the select committee in the first place. However, who could imagine that? Now, according to information we received a few days ago, who could imagine that some of us among the select committee would tip off the um, subject of investigation and uh, cause this saga, and then they blame us. So they're trying to shift the focus. Holden Chow was not genuine in apologizing. He said that uh, he apologized for mishandling. So uh, it's just like uh, a burglar uh, who has left his fingerprints at the crime scene of uh, scene of crime, and he apologized for having left behind his fingerprints. Holden Chow is admitted to communicating with Siwa Leung secretly to uh, to to allow him to make amendments to the document, and uh, we will follow up on the consequence of the matter. This is serious because. If the Secretariat had not uh, been dedicated to their duties, it's quite likely that the relevant changes have become the terms of reference or the scope of our investigation. So for sure it has influenced our investigation. How can you say that there is none? And hold on, Chow. Don't keep on saying that uh, the document uh, is um, neither true nor uh, or n nor genuine. I think this is uh, offensive to the Secretariat. Uh, Mr. Kim Yun, well, the Chinese has a saying that we have uh, to stick to all sorts of rituals and uh, procedures and propriety because this is very important. This is improper because it's about uh, relations between the executive and the legislature. We have laws, we have rules, we have moral standards, we have political uh, morals to uphold. If a lawmaker can allow the CE or any other accountable officer or a civil servant to amend a document and has it uploaded to um, the um, Internet without uh, disclosing the fact, and then and treat that document as its own work. Then, is it that in the future, when we speak here, when we submit documents, we always have to ask whether there is anyone behind the scene? If so, how can this council discharge its duties, given that it is so serious that we have to draw a very clear line where we should not trespass into and we and that's the reason why we have this motion. And this is about uh, whether Mr. Holden Chow has learned something after his reflection. If not, there is no way we can uphold the convention of this council. So it is unsup unacceptable to say that this there is no flouting of rules, no breaching of our <coughs> rules. Mr. Adiju, this private communication or private collusion with Siwa Leung is a very serious matter. So the crux of the matter is whether there is any secret communications between the two. Holden Chow said on the 25th of April that, I'm sorry, I should have told you earlier that, that uh, the changes were made in consultation with Siwa Leung, and he said that he had not hidden anything because of his document 
exposed or tracked changes. And I think that's Holden Charles version supported by Gary Chen in public. And then he had not done anything because uh, everything was in the public. The document could be seen by anyone. I don't think that is the view of all the members of the public. The April document for sure did not was not marked that it was amended by C. Y. Leung. So there was concealment on that day and the uh changes that are tracked there just shows that you are stupid. You are not being frank and honest. So I don't know which version is correct because I don't know. So I think we should have a select committee to investigate into the motive of Holden Chow to see whether there is any collusion or private collusion, collusion between Holden Chow and Si Wan Leung. If the answer is yes, we should condemn him. Mr. Yu Si Wing, uh, Mr. Holden Chow has been improper in uh, dealing with the document. He hasn't done enough to uh, defend the independence of the council. He hasn't uh, he hasn't been appropriate and as a new member I think he should reflect on his conduct and to show the responsibility he has already resigned from the select committee and I believe that is appropriate. As we all know the document is just a draft. It's just a proposal on uh, the scope of investigation. It is not a secret document. It is an open pub uh, document. I don't agree that uh, it is against our rules. It's just improper handling. And therefore, I would not support this censure motion. On the other hand, Dr. Kwoka get asked whether the select committee should be dismissed and reformed again. I think that is worth considering because there are members in the select committee that have uh, expressed their very strong views on this matter. They are already biased and I think this will cause people to cast doubt on the credibility of the outcome of investigation. Given the situation, we should discuss whether the select committee should be disbanded. That may be beneficial to the uh, further work or the further investigation. Mr. Ray Chen, yes, uh, it's expected that um, the pre establishment members would defend those in the wrong. Uh, Mrs. Regina Yip uh, was doing so very blindly. She said that Mr. Holden Chow already knew that he was wrong. I don't think so. Just now he said that anyone could comment and give views. And the public, of course, can uh, submit views to the select committee, can even write articles on that. But as a member of uh, the SLAP committee, you should not discuss with the subject of investigation. It's just like asking the boss to clear a document, to amend it, and the changes are not even are deleted. The tracks are not, the traces are not deleted before the document is submitted. Holden Child claims that he has not hidden anything. If it were not exposed by the Secretariat, when would Holden Child plan to tell us which part of the amendments were made by Siwa Leung? So even you want to defend your own member, you should not do it this way. Because uh, we're talking about the credibility of the whole council. If you defend Holden Child blindly, well, even we have uh, one Holden Child less, is useless because everyone can be Holden Child. Now, if you think that Holden Child uh, 
was、uh, wrong because、uh, he left behind the traces. Does that mean that so long as he has removed all the traces, that's okay? You have to make it clear to us, Mr. Ma Fong Kwok. Thank you, Chairman. I'm a member of、uh, the Select Committee. Uh, at first, I thought I shouldn't speak too much on this. We should focus on、uh, the investigation work rather. I'd like to, I'd like to remind members that why do we have to have this discussion? Is because、um, we have a closed door meeting、uh, dealing with this, and. There are a number of、uh, members of the select committee who, on ver various occasions,、um, divulge this、uh, to the members of the public. There were twenty media organisations、uh, who approached me over the past couple of days、uh, for comments. I declined them all because、uh, I have to observe、uh, the integrity. I Unless、uh, we have a conclusion, unless we have any consensus, I don't think we should divulge anything because、uh, it it doesn't seem to be fair to anybody at all. Now someone is moving a motion at the House Committee, and he's moving or they are moving a motion、um, in absence of all the details. I don't think it is appropriate. And I, I find this regrettable because this is undermining undermining the credibility of the council. Since、um, the issue is、um, being handled、uh, by the select committee, why don't we、uh, have more faith and more trust、uh, in the select committee to identify a solution? Uh, not least、um, the solution to、um, the problems arising from、uh, Mr. Holden Chow's behaviour. Why do I have、um, to to move this censure motion, Mr. Wichuai, Madam Chair? This is a censure motion. I don't think we can take a decision today. We still have to have a debate、uh, at the full council meeting. Some members suggested that、uh, we should await、uh, the the decision of the select committee. I think it is、um, relevant. Of course, the select committee. Can take a decision、uh, on Mr. Holden Chow's behaviour. Whether、uh, there has been any、um, problems、uh, with the cred credibility of the、uh, select committee. Members suggesting that、uh, we should wait. I think this is、uh, ridiculous. Second, the pro establishment、uh, members are saying that、uh, somebody is divulging the the、uh, secrets. Now you can conduct an investigation into that, but we can see that at the select committee, a member、uh, colluded with、um, the subject of investigation, and he is trying to、uh, twist、uh, the direction and scope of the inquiry. So you are trying to divert attention through personal attack. And through your suggestion that、uh, the issue should be left with、uh, the select committee, I think all you're trying to do is、uh, to divert attention. The fact remains that there is collusion between select committee member and the subject of investigation. That's the crux of the matter. Mr. Chow has resigned, but it doesn't mean that he has、uh, reflected upon this. And he has offered an apology of today. He's saying that、uh, he's got nothing to hide. He's not breached、uh, any law and rules. I think he is、uh, hiding behind、um, this、uh, resignation, Mr. Tetway. Now, during、um, the election period,、uh, some people dubbed、um, Holden Chow as、um, C Y Chow.、Um, I mean, the two are really、uh, part of each other. You are colluding with C Y Long, and you have、uh, something to hide. You have breached、um, the rules, and you have breached、um, the the law, and you have committed misconduct in public office. It's not a question of your own personal integrity, but 
you are affecting the wider issue of、um, the constitutional standing of the council. How can we monitor the government? How can we supervise the government、um, when it comes to、uh, maladministration? When we sit on the committees and panels, do we have to ask every single one of、uh, the the pro establishment、uh, members whether they are here representing、uh, Carrie Lam or or C Y Long? The logical credibility is out of the window. People don't have any faith、uh, in the council anymore. That's the crux of the matter. It's not a question of your personal integrity. So members are moving this、uh, censure motion. Uh, to strip you of、um, the membership here, I don't think they have gone too far. The question is、uh, not for you to to resign from the select committee. It's not too much to ask、uh, you to resign from the council, and this is、um, the only way、uh, you can、uh, salvage the credibility of the council. I hope that you will consider this, Mr. Junis Ho. This is a serious matter, but I think we have to follow the. Procedures. I don't agree that、um, there should be a censure motion to be moved at this stage. I am a member of the select committee. Since、uh, what happened, the select committee has、uh, unanimously agreed that、uh, we have to keep quiet about it. We have to to uh, observe um, the confidentiality. Now, once.、Um, The meeting、uh, was done.、Uh, everything was in the public domain, and I think if someone rebuked、uh, another member for discussing the scope of inquiry with the subject of investigation,、uh, it is uh, uh, a a moral issue, and if. Uh, we breach、um, the、um, the regulation, then it is a, a serious matter. I think we have to wait、uh, the select committee to have a meeting at four thirty, and then Mr. Paul J, the chairman of、um, the the select committee, will make a report. If members feel that、um, divulging secrets、uh, is a serious、uh, matter, it is a breach of、um, the rules. Then we can deal with them all together. It is.、Um, Procedurally more appropriate. I don't think it is appropriate、um, for us to to move these at this point in time.、Uh, so I object to、um, the censure motion. Dr. Edward Yu, Madam Chair, Lechko enjoys the privilege to set up a select committee under the Basic Law, and we should. Uh, make the、um, fair investigation as、um, our overriding, overarching objective. That the person concerned、uh, doesn't admit any wrongdoing. That he is insisting that the document is an open document, and what he can comment on it. If we accept this assertion, then it would mean that any select committee. Would have to pass on、um, the、uh, word file to the subject of, of investigation、um, to to uh, make um, track term changes. So does it mean that for open documents, we have to、uh, let the subject of investigation have、um, the the word file for track changes? This is an important matter. If、um, The member concerned doesn't admit any wrongdoing, then it would mean that all the investigations、uh, of the previous select committees、um, were、uh, negligent.、Um, the、uh, Timothy Tong、uh, select committee. Have you passed on the the word file to、uh, Timothy Tong? Lehman Brothers,、uh, Long Chin Man. Have you passed on the the word file for track changes? This may overrule the decision and conclusion of the previous select committees, so it would affect、um, the way forward. Your your time is up, Mr. Horace Jones.
Madam Chair. It is the Senate Committee to investigate into the UGL incident in a fair manner. The pan Democratic members um, flouted the uh, confidentiality and uh, divulged um, the details. Mr. Chow has uh, resigned from the Senate Committee, but I heard from members that um, Mr. Chow has to pay the price uh, by resigning uh, to take uh, responsibility in order to maintain the fairness and independence of um, the Select Committee. Now, some said that um, the uh, the Council has become dysfunctional. Now, if we want to maintain the neutrality of um, the Select Committee, do we have to deal with the issues? Mr. Kenneth Leung uh, has um, a defamation case with uh, CY Leung. The subject of investigation is uh, having a go at the uh, subject of investigation. Is there not any conflict of interest? I learned from the news that Mr. Kenneth Leung said that he has asked um, the Secretariat and the legal advisor, and he was told that there is no conflict of interest. I hope uh, Mr. Leung will clarify uh, who or which legal advisor told him that there is no conflict of interest. I hope that he will lay bare uh, the details so that the Select Committee can proceed uh, in a fair and just manner. Mr. Ben Chen. We've been talking about integrity. Uh, in absence of any conclusion, uh, the members are um, rushing out to comment on the details. Now, uh, some uh, said that um, uh, the council has become dysfunctional, and uh, Ms. Claudia Mo said that uh, you can ask uh, C.Y. Long not to take uh, Kenneth Long to court. Are you using the Select Committee to uh, hold uh, C.Y. Long to resume and make him not um, take Kenneth Long to court? There is a conflict of interest. Like Mr. Leung hasn't said a word. He's the accused, and he's investigating um, the person who is taking him to court. The UGL Select Committee basically uh, is uh, was set up uh, with uh, prejudice. Uh, in the first place. So the committee is full of prejudice and they are flexing their muscles and they are undermining all the rules. There is confidentiality and there is a member who is taken to court uh, by the subject of investigation and he is uh, sitting on this committee. Why don't you say something, Mr. Leung? Mr. Leung Chi Chung, well, will you uh, let Mr. Kenneth Leung have the floor? Please, uh, we have to maximize the time. We're going to have the Finance Committee meeting. Yes, we will shut up. The Pandams are basically saying that we have to investigate the Holden Chow. I think um, it is very much a feeding frenzy. There is nothing much for them to do. And they are latching on to a Holden Chow uh, issue. The chairman of the Select Committee, Mr. Paul Chair, has said that uh, at the closed door meeting, members are not supposed to divulge the details. But shortly after the meeting, everything is uh, in the public domain. They suggested that um, there should be investigation. Like Mr. Ben Chen said, um, it is uh, full of prejudice is not so much an a, an investigation. I think uh, you're trying to bring uh, your political enemy to his knees. But I would uh, think that um, they, they would uh, much rather see Mr. Houghton Chow resign from his seat. That this is uh, really unreasonable. This is uh, not sensible. This is not uh, well-founded. I, I don't think I can support this. 
and they're suggesting that uh, we should bring this up for discussion. They're going to have a meeting uh, later on. Mr. Chow has uh, resigned. I think the whole thing has uh, uh, come to an end. I think we have to leave it to uh, Mr. Paul Che to, to lead the investigation. We don't have to bring this up uh, here for investigation. Uh, I think they're trying to bring his enemy to his knees. Um, got this is Ronick Chen. Thank you, Chairman. Mr. Siwa Leung is a subject of investigation, not a government uh, official being monitored. So, uh, Mr. Ho Lin Cho, Cha, and uh, so this is very different from the ordinary work of the council. Now this is just open information. In 2017, the 3rd of March, when the select committee had its first meeting, members passed uh, the proposed uh, procedures and uh, way of work. And there are five principles. A said that all the development procedures and work must be fair, must be seen to be fair. In particular, to persons uh, that or uh, to parties uh, whose reputation might be affected uh, by the um, work of the subcommittee. So we have to ensure that uh, Mr. Siwa Lang feels that uh, the whole procedures are fair. So, yes, I think um, Ms. Toden Chow, uh, so way of handling uh, the proposed uh, scope of uh, investigation uh, leaves uh, uh, to be desired, but he has already recluse himself from the select committee. And this motion has not pointed out the characteristics and the procedures of investigation, and therefore the motion itself is a bit biased, and therefore I cannot agree to the two motions. However, I agree with Dr. Kwakaki's letter, and that is uh, we should review the operation of the select committee. Your time is up. Dr. Elizabeth Quatt. The select committee has aroused a great public concern. Of course, Mr. Oden Chow hasn't handled the matter very well, and he has resigned from the select committee. And in fact, the public are very concerned about uh, the uh, leak of confiden confidential information and also a possible conflict of interest associated with the select committee. I'm quite concerned about Mr. Kenneth Leung's possible conflict of interest. So I'd like to ask our legal advisor, given that Mr. Leung is engaged in a lawsuit uh, with Mr. Leung, and in fact he is uh, being sued for libel. Now, there are public comments that they're worried that uh, Mr. Kenneth Leung may be using this to um, revenge against uh, Mr. Siwai Leung. And I think uh, for the sake of fairness, Mr. Kenneth Leung should resign from the sub select committee as well. So, legal advisor, can you tell us whether Mr. Kenneth Leung has declared his conflict of interest and whether there is any conflict of interest for his being a member of the select committee? Now, if uh, the select committee cannot continue to uh, operate um, in camera, how can it continue to uh, operate? I think we should set up a subcommittee to investigate into this matter. Otherwise, our closed-door investigations will not have any credibility in the future. We will focus on the motion itself if uh, members would like to uh, follow up on the operation of the select committee. Please do so on another occasion. Then can Mr. Kenneth Leung disclose to the public whether he has declared interest in the select committee and whether he intends to uh, resign from the select committee? Otherwise, I don't know how to um, handle Enquiries from the public, Mr. Fenjiang. Now I'd like to 
lecture, I like to uh, teach the some facts to the pro establishment members. I would like to drag Mr. Kenneth Leung into the matter. In fact, uh, it was only after the select committee was formed here that Siwa Leung decided to sue Kenneth Leung. So please. Get the facts right first. So, if the spacious argument by the pro-establishment camp stands, then in future anyone who is under investigation can sue each and every member of a select committee, and then we cannot proceed. I think this is the only, only um, argument you can come up with after you have scratched your heads. Well, you are legislators, so. For to defend the dignity of this council, please show some integrity. Someone from your camp has taken the initiative to pass on this proposed scope of investigation to the subject of investigation. So even the fingerprints, the uh, tracks are all shown here. And Mr. Chow claims that he has not hidden anything. Is this a lawyer? And you ask us to uh, give uh, this new member a chance, but he has not even apologized for his mistake. Why should we give him a chance? Holden Chow, do you know that many pro establishment members are defending you reluctantly? Do you know? I think they know what is right and wrong, but because you are from the same political party, they have no choice but to support you openly. Yes, pro establishment members, we know that you are in a very difficult position, and therefore we are doing the work, doing the job for you. Mr. Stephen Ho, uh, Dr. Kwokaki said in, his, uh, in the last paragraph of his letter that uh, the select committee should be uh, dismissed. Uh, in fact, I think Lechko should not be the right forum to have a select committee because our we are not up to the quality. We don't have the caliber to do such things because as soon as the select committee was formed, there was already prejudice. And as for the membership or the number of members in the select committee, Hanana Wong uh, talked about uh, the number of Pro establishment members and members from the opposition camp there because she knew right from start that there were preconceived ideas and she talked about uh, being a fair and just. I don't know what this argument is about. As for whether Holden has um, made any mistake, I do agree that he has not handled the matter well. Mr. Dennis Cox said that Holden Chow has not apologized, and Alvin Young also said the same. What about? Uh, um, about uh, the incident involving Yao Wei Ching and uh, Chang Chong Tai and Long Chong Hang. Did they apologize? Have they apologized? And what were you doing when you uh, were surrounding them? It's just the same. And the question is whether we followed up. Yes. How? By means of a closed door meeting. The problem is they have already exposed everything to the public, they have totally disregarded the proper procedures. So I think, well, your time is up. Because uh, we planned to end at 4.15, we've already overrun and there is still the FC to follow. So I will allow three more members to speak. I'll give the floor to Ms. Claudia Mo. Mr. Oden Chow, and then Mr. Dr. Kwakaki, Ms. Claudia Mo, and double agent said that there, he, he was not wrong in concealing things, and he uh, is justified to break the rules. I think this is a blatant example displayed by Holden Chow. And Mr. Chow is a lawyer, and he doesn't know who is the plaintiff, who is the defendant. And now he named me for smearing him. Which of my remarks smeared him? All I said was supported by facts. 
Aren't you in breach of the basic law? Siwai Le is a wolf. Many people call him so. And it's only today that I know that you are colluding with him. To call you a double agent is already too courteous. You are his accomplice. You don't even have common sense. Dr. Kwakaki. Thank you. I thought Hoden Chow knew for sure what mistakes is made. He said he had not hidden anything, he had not breached the rules, he had not breached the, uh, the law. This is exactly why people cannot put up with you. DAB and members from the um, from the poor establishment camp are so cheap because they have shifted the focus. I have no fear because uh, this is very um, base behavior. Dr. An Zhang, you raise a point of order? Yes. What point of order? 41.4, and what would you like to rule? It's offensive. I urge Dr. Kwaki to uh, withdraw his remarks, calling us cheap. Which sentence? Well, if I am, uh, if I am telling the truth, and you call it offensive, this word should not have come out, come from the mouth of a doctor. I will repeat once again. I, I can repeat it again. Doctor Kwakaki, are you referring to a member of this council? I haven't. Well, if uh, they are. Uh, like to um well please go on we don't have time i'm just reminded by members that i should use the term shameless that's also appropriate why have you shifted the focus see what i learned asked or sought the help of holding child to acquit himself and you have shifted the focus to somebody else. Fortunately, somebody was willing to uh, expose it, and you call it a breach of confidentiality. That is, if you saw someone beat up another person, you should keep silent and allow uh, the one to be beaten to death. Mr. Oden Chow, many um, members used uh, words like collusion. I think it is serious smearing of me. I repeat once again that I have not hidden anything. I have not uh, breached any rule or breached any law in dealing with the UGL incident. I just wanted to ensure that the investigation was fair and comprehensive. Now, if uh, the facts were not entirely true, then we should adjust it. Otherwise, the outcome of the investigation would be biased and unfair. I'd like to point out in particular what Mr. Kwakaki said. You offended colleagues. That was very rude. If you have any strong views about myself, I've heard them. But since you offended my colleagues, I'd like to say that you were very rude. Different <coughs> members from different political parties have expressed their views on the uh, proposed motions. As I said right from the beginning, that in accordance with the ROP, there are established procedures for uh, censuring members. We wait until the select committee has completed its work, and then members can uh, debate and then vote on this uh, censure motions at a logical sitting. There, we don't have any AOB meeting adjourned.